consider, but. <laughs> hey guys, it's Morgan. Welcome to another weekly slog here at Highland Cycles, uh, where we show you all kinds of cool dirt bike stuff, how to's, reviews, things like that. Um, show really jacked up stuff that people screw up. Uh, blown up things. Anyway, it's a lot of fun. And if you're new, make sure you stick with us for this video. Uh, if you enjoy it, go ahead, hit the subscribe button, thumbs up, all that YouTube-y, algorithm-y kind of stuff. Um, angry Zach is over there being angry at a set of suspension. Doing tons of that these days. Uh, it's been busy, busy, busy. And uh, yeah, if that sounds like fun, here we go. <laughs> All right, first on the lift is this Beta 125RR, I think this is what they call them. Anyway, these are cool little bikes. It's just a really super, super simple little dirt bike. Uh, and these are owned by the School of Moto up in, I believe, Fruta? Anyway, north of here, near Grand Junction maybe. Anyway, De Donnie at the School of Moto brought these down because they've been sitting for a little while and they don't run very good. I think the carburetors just need to be cleaned. We're also going to change the oil. But make sure if you are here and in this area and you're looking for someone for teaching, guiding, things like that, uh, there's two awesome companies, um, Enduro Ranch and School of Moto. It's schoolofmoto.com. I'll put it up here on the screen. Uh, make sure you check them out. They've got great bikes. Uh, they have bigger bikes than this too. Uh, these are just the kind of beginner level stuff that they have. And uh, yeah, we're going to get this thing taken care of and then uh, we'll get it running. So I've honestly not worked on one of these before. So I don't even know what kind of carburetor it's got. It looks like it's maybe kind of a funky one. Let's take a look. Uh, what is a lot going on there? Uh, there's a choke and a low ball and a... All right, so what we're going to try to do is uh, I'm going to try really hard not to completely remove this carburetor because she rides it and it does run. So I'm thinking it's just the pilot circuit it won't run with the choke off. So hoping it's just the pilot circuit, hoping I can get away without uh, taking it all the way off only because I'm trying to get it done really quickly. Normally, uh, I just take it all apart and take care of it, whatever. But she is wanting to pick them up today. It's Tuesday. Uh, she dropped them off on Friday so that we would be able to work on them first thing. So that's what we're doing. Let's see if we can get in there uh, and take care of this thing and then uh, get her back rolling. All right, guys. So I think we got lucky. I was able to turn it sideways. I had to unhook the uh, choke uh, so that it wouldn't hit on anything. Uh, but I was able to leave the throttle cables and everything else uh, on there, loosen the clamps on the boots, and flip that thing sideways. I did find dirt in that carburetor uh, float bowl, so that is good news. <laughs> I mean, it's good news because that is like a smoking gun, is to pry some dirt in here. I uh, pulled the pilot jet out, and I cannot see through it just looking at it. Uh, now, sometimes, guys, if you are used to carburetors, you know this, if you're not, sometimes you pull a jet out and you look through it really fast and you can't see anything. Sometimes it's just because there's a film of gas in there. So to confirm that it is clogged, I try to blow through it like that. Look, nothing. If you just do that, because if you put like compressed air to it, it'll probably blow whatever's in there out. But if you just blow like that from a distance, if it's just a film of gas, you'll definitely be able to see through it. I can't see through it. So I am sure that this is clogged. I'm now going to clean this out, check everything else in here, make sure the float is working, although everything else is good. It wasn't leaking gas or anything like that. Put it all back together, slap the tank on it, and we'll see if it runs better. All right, guys, tank back on, thing cleaned. Let's try it with the choke off. We'll see what happens here. So it might still need a choke because it is cold, so we'll pull that. All right, that's already better because the choke was on before and it wouldn't, like, it wouldn't idle that high, so let's 
let her warm up for a second here. Try rolling that off. All right, that's a good sign. Chokes off. Now these are not high performance motorcycles um, by any means. Ooh, getting a little low. Let's see. Whoa. Let's see. We might still have some adjustments we need to make. So now I'm gonna see if I can adjust the air screw a little bit, or fuel screw, I guess, on a four-stroke. See how it's, it's much better than it was, but it's definitely, sounds like it might still be a little lean on the idle circuit. A lot of these kinda, I don't wanna call it lower end, but a lot of these more simple motorcycles um, they um, they're they come very lean from the factory and they need a long time to warm up uh, before they're good and it's like TTR 125s from Yamaha things like that so uh, I'm gonna let it warm up I mean it's not even touching the head it's not even it's barely above room temperature so uh, but I'm gonna see if I can get the fuel screw. The, looks like they put a plug in it. I'm gonna see if I can get that out. If I can, uh, then we'll be able to adjust that and give it a little more gas on the bottom too. All right, guys. So I uh, I couldn't get the the plug out. Well, not easily. I couldn't get the plug out for the fuel screw, so I didn't want to mess with it. Also, she has other ones of these that are run just fine. Uh, so I was like, yeah, it's got to be. I got to be able to take care of it without taking that plug out. So. I took the car back apart just to take a look at some stuff, uh, and because uh, I had, I took the tank off to get to the plug. I could, anyway, so put that all back, and uh, now it runs great. Um, I actually took the the main jet out, and I blew through the main jet with the the air nozzle. I thought I would have blown anything out, but I found a little stuff uh, like a film in there, and then also I found even more dirt in the carb. Not a lot, but a little bit. And so what I did was I installed a uh, fuel filter. It was not a fuel filter. That's the original line. So I put new line, new fuel filter. It seems like we're all good to go. So pretty happy about that. I'm uh, going to change the oil, uh, bring the other one up here. And if I find anything different on it, I'll bring you guys in. Otherwise, we'll get on to the next job. All right, guys, next on the, oh, by the way, uh, both of those betas ran great. Sorry, I didn't check back in. Uh, but after getting the fuel screw, I actually ended up getting the fuel screw cover off, adjusted them. They both ran better than I think the other one did. So the one that didn't come in, although, so it's gonna come in, we'll do that. And I'll shoot a better video on how to get that uh, fuel screw plug off um, and get that done. So anyway, very excited about that. Make sure you check out uh, School of Moto, S-K-O-O-L of Moto, I think. Yeah, S-K-O-O-L-O-F-M-O-T-O.com. And by the way, if you're lucky enough, you'll get a set of shop panties. There we go. Uh, I'm not wearing mine. Uh, they're hanging up. <laughs> That's for you people. So next on the lift is this Suzuki RM80, I believe. That's what this thing is. It's awesome. I'm pretty excited. It's a 1970s some odd in there. Um, it feels like it's got enough compression uh, to run. I'm pretty excited about this. The owner uh, brought it and that sweet old CR80, right there. And we are gonna breathe life back into these bikes. I'm pretty stoked. Uh, so first things first, <clears throat> we gotta see if we can go make it make noise. So I'm going to uh, start by taking the carburetor off because it's clearly, ugh, uh, and then <laughs> put a new spark plug in it and check out the gas tank. Hopefully it's not too terrible bad. If it is, we have a guy in town that actually does a really good job of refurbishing the insides of these things. Uh, but even if it is bad, we're gonna get some gas into the carburetor. I think we got a new air filter. Uh, it needs lots of things. It needs, uh, actually the clutch cable works, but the brakes are, anyway, 
you can see it needs a ton of love. This is gonna be fun. Uh, yeah, make sure you stick with us for this schlag. We're gonna have a ton of fun working on cool old mini bikes. All right guys, so <clears throat> spark plug out. Let's see if it sparks. Gotta figure out how to kick it and have a look at the plug as it's resting on the cylinder. Okay. Boom! I think you guys could even see that. Oh, that was only one big spark. But that doesn't mean it's bad. Anything's... There we go. This wasn't making a good ground. Sweet. So we're going to go grab a new spark plug. And then uh, probably what I'm going to do before I even take the carburetor off is put a new spark plug in, spray some uh, brake clean just real quick into the air box just a little bit because we don't want this to run too long. Since it's a two stroke, we don't want it <clears throat> to run too long on non-mixed gas. So we just want to hear it go bang and make some a little bit of noise and we'll shut it off, clean the carburetor. We'll take a look at the tank. The tank does not smell good. Um, let's actually see. Actually, oh, dude, that looks amazing. <laughs> there might be just a tiny bit of rust, just the tiniest, tiniest, and the gas is absolutely disgusting. But I think with some white vinegar, some shaking around, and some cleaning, we might get away with not having to re uh, finish the inside of this tank. That is awesome. Uh, anyway. Let's go get a plug and all that stuff and see if this thing will make some sound. All right, guys, quick break here uh, from the little Suzuki. Zach is working on a suite. What is that? Mm, it's got blue on it. Hold on. Focus. There we go. That was on the flywheel and it's magnetic. Let's go over to it. Of this KTM 300, I'm guessing. Is this a 300? 250. 250, whatever. Same thing. Um, is it? I wonder if key looks good. So that was in. Was it just stuck to it? No, it was hanging out like in there. So it's down in here. It's got blue on it. Using some prying up here with something. I don't know if they like broke off a tool. It's a chunk of something. <laughs> Not from the motor. I don't know. There's definitely pry marks. Uh, and the, the word we're getting is that after he rides this thing for 30 minutes or so, it loses power to the point it's unrideable. Uh, this crank seal is 100% leaking. So I'm wondering, my first guess is that it's getting hot and starting to try to seize the connecting rod, although it's never just died, it's never locked up the tire. So I don't know, maybe it's not that bad. I don't know, but it's, well, it's not good, right? <laughs> so uh, the stator doesn't look terrible. This is the ignition part of it. This is the charging part and ignition. Anyway, this is the, that's the pulser coil, guys. This is gonna be like the ignition for spark and this is usually charging. <clears throat> So, uh, or AC charging, anyway, uh, for the battery and for the lighting, because these have an AC circuit for lighting and then charge the battery separately. So, that's interesting. We don't know exactly what's going on. What's the piston look like through the looks pretty good. pipe? Piston and cylinder that I can see looks pretty good. I mean, I believe, yeah. The, um, so I think the top end, I think the cylinder needs to come off and check that big end bearing because I just have a weird feeling that it's tr <laughs> trying to seize that thing. Um, that and also it might need, if that seal's leaking on the left side, then on the right side it might be leaking too. It probably needs one of those. It might need a crank. I don't know. <laughs> he, uh, when he dropped it off, he did not explain this. Um, he, we put tire, what did we do? Put tires on it? Tires, full service. 
yeah, tires and full service. He did not say, oh, by the way, when I ride it, it drops <laughs> power. So <laughs> we got to figure that out. Uh, and also, depending on what the power loss, I don't know. Anyway, we need to replicate or figure it out, but we're going to dig deep and we will keep you guys updated because uh, that's craziness. So um, I got a spark plug over here for this thing, I think. Did I set it down? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to put this in, see if this thing will make some noise, and then we'll go forward. All right, guys, I heard it make a little bit of noise there. I think we're gonna be good. Um, it's not real strong on the kick, but again, it's a mini bike. And it's been sitting a long time. So uh, the other thing I can't do is twist the throttle. It, that's just the free play a little bit. Uh, the <clears throat> the uh, slide I'm sure is seized in here. So we're going to get that sucker off, break it loose, get it into the ultrasonic and then we will go from there. Um, I bet if I had been able to open that up, we could have made it run for just a second, but I heard it make noise. I think we're gonna be good. All right guys, so uh, I got the carburetor all clean. Look how nice and shiny that is. Looks so good. Got the air box all cleaned up. I do need to find an air filter. I thought we had found one, but we didn't. So we're gonna hunt one of those down or we'll make one. <clears throat> uh, we're close to getting that thing to start hopefully and run, but I just want to show you something uh, we're working on a shock here uh, real fast the pds ktm shock no big deal um, but i just want to show you something that we do here at highland cycles uh, and if you're getting your shock serviced you should definitely have your guys do it um, if you take a look here you can see the darkness so i wipe it off and it that's that's all the stuff in between those shims if you don't get that clean then um, your shim stack's not going to work like it's supposed to work. It's not going to flow oil like it's supposed to flow oil. So uh, someone else has valved this, which is awesome. I think this guy's actually very happy with the valving, which is cool. Um, but we are here to service it. So we put a new seal, um, new dust cover. The bushing's actually good. But then the piston band, this is the old piston band. And you can kind of, let's see if I can get this thing to focus. Focus. There we go. See that? right in the middle it's just a little off it's kind of hard to tell the color on the camera but anyway a little off not great so we took that out brand new piston band uh this one's from uh who's this from csr suspension i like them they're metal uh and then there's an o-ring obviously inside there and they're metal with a teflon coating and they're really really nice so that's good gonna clean these shims up put this thing back together just want to show you guys a little bit of how we do things here and how your suspension shop should do things if they're not. All right, guys, uh, next on the lift is a quick one here with my bike, the 23 300XC. Uh, we are doing some serious hard enduro training, actually taking it seriously, trying to get ready for uh, the Silver Kings race up in Kellogg, Idaho. Uh, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned, all that good stuff, hit the notification bells because we are going to that race and I'm going to suffer through it and hopefully do better than terrible. <laughs> uh, but this is one of the casualties <laughs> of training in the rocks. Uh, that was actually not one of the crashes I had. It was just going a little too quickly through a really rocky section and dinging that pipe. Uh, I got a little one over here. I've obviously blown this pipe out a bunch, uh, but I did okay. Uh, and honestly, pretty happy that that's the only damage from last night. I don't, like I said, I didn't uh, video last night. I honestly just forgot I was going to. Uh, I forgot to grab my helmet with the cameras and stuff like that because uh, we were kind of in a hurry to get out of here last night. So um, I didn't get any video, but I just want to talk about how well all the protection parts are doing on this bike because it is doing so well. First of all... Cannot say enough about the bulletproof designs rear discard. I did bend it, uh, but it 
did not touch the rotor and the rotor is straight and I kept my brakes all night. So, you know, really happy about that. Um, that thing's burly. Same with this caliper guard. Uh, there we go. Um, Enduro Hog, really like all their stuff. I got the clutch cover, pipe cover, and the ignition cover on the other side. Uh, Bulletproof Designs, this thing has been hammered, keeping my fork uh, leg in good shape. Then I'm running the System Tech Racing front guard. Bulletproof Designs gave me one. I really like it, uh, but I like this one better because it slides off the rocks. It doesn't hang up, and I've had aluminum disc guards hang up and send me over the bars before. Uh, Bulletproof Designs radiator guards, hands down, best in the business. Uh, throttle position sensor and injector guard, uh, honestly key uh, to these things, especially with all the sticks and rocks and stuff that can get, get in there. Um, Cross-link components, uh, swing arm guards, honestly, so handy, so amazing, so happy. Really wish I had had them when I first got the bike to really protect the swing arms from the get-go. Um, but they are doing such a great job. Uh, and I know somebody was like, oh, those things are trap dirt and you can't. They're super easy to take off and clean behind. I've already cleaned behind these things like three or four times. It's just these two bolts, that zip tie, thing comes off clean, put it back on. New zip ties, big deal. Um, Bulletproof Designs uh, swing arm guard doing its job. The Acherbis, um, Acherbis, excuse me, um, chain guide doing really well so far, holding up pretty good. I'm happy with that. DDC sprocket is not a, a uh, protection piece, but it's really, really good. Spanish Fly Racing um, spark arrestor. Again, I know that's not protection, but that thing is awesome. And I love it. The bike runs like it's not even on there. I love that thing. So happy. Oh, G-Rip bar ends. Like, let me tell you guys, I've slammed this thing down on its side. There we go. Quite a few times. These things are badass. I uh, stock them he here in the shop now, um, but you can also get them at... Uh, I'll put a link, um, but those are made here in Colorado by Rick Emerson, and they're freaking incredible. Bomber bar switches, also bad to the bone. Thank you so much, Motor Minded. Anyway, this bike is kicking ass. The fan's working great. I'm not, the stator hasn't died when the fan runs, when we're in this hard enduro stuff. So, super, super happy. Honestly, uh, stock skid plate doing pretty well. Getting hammered. Uh, got the enduro engineering rear um, slide on it to keep it off. And then got the Bulletproof Designs actual guard. So this piece is just so that this piece slides over the rocks and doesn't get hung up. Anyway, uh, oh, Carapax foot pegs. Guys, these things have taken a beating. I did break a spring. I got a new spring because I think, I don't know, whatever, I broke a spring. <laughs> so I got a new one. I got to put that on today. Um, but, but these uh, these um, foot pegs and this uh, brake pedal are absolutely incredible. They have taken a nasty beating and they are holding up so well really happy about that that is awesome um yeah but and honestly the bulletproof designs foot pegs that they sent me also were super super good so both sets are i think better than stock uh the bulletproof designs are definitely lighter if you want to go lighter care packs uh definitely a little more aggressive um uh, footbed so gonna stick to them better also probably tearing up the soles of my boots a little bit faster um, I will show you those I've actually got uh, boot soles to replace my soles um, here hopefully soon I want to get those on I got to learn how to do that and I'll show you make a video about it but uh, but they're great and they're not tearing up the soles of the boots that fast I really like it um, all right let's pull this pipe off and blow it out I've showed it a bunch of times but honestly it's just kind of cool to watch All right, guys, got the 300 pipe all blown out. Looks pretty good, I think. Let me show you. Also got my foot peg fixed. So, not bad. Got it off the frame. It's not, you know, whatever. You can see there, it's not touching anything. So, turned out pretty good. Get a little more time out of that before we have to replace it. Uh, but next on the lift is this KX450F. We are installing a recluse and putting handlebars and grips and 
uh, risers or something. Anyway, some other things. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. I don't know if I've ever showed a recluse install on a KX. So I'm going to show you all that. Um, we are doing the radius X. This is the less expensive version. Um, it is like 800 bucks, 700 bucks, something like that. Um, yeah, we'll show you what that looks like and then uh, install. In fact, let's just sit you down and show you what's all in the box of a Radius X. All right, so this is the expanding ring. This is what does the work. This is the part that makes a recluse be a recluse. Um, so the way this works is you got weights in here and centrifugal force pushes these weights out and you can see that that gets thicker you know this way so what you do is you hold the clutch open with an adjustment and on this one it's going to be with the cable you hold the clutch open just a little bit this is in there and then when it spins up it engages the clutch so it's pretty cool you can still override it just like normal uh, the radius x comes with steels and frictions it's pretty nice new springs because you got to put a little more tension on it uh, since you're putting you're taking some plates out since this is just dropping in so you got to put a little more tension on it so it doesn't slip and then it comes with these little sleeves for the basket to help um, these very thin i'll pull these out here these really thin uh friction plates if you just put those in they will groove a basket really really fast so they come these are steel to cover up the aluminum and anyway so uh and i can say from experience if you're using this because i put one on a yz of my own I, it wasn't the the auto clutch but i put the torque drive manual with the really thin plates the basket needs to be almost new or like at least not grooved at all before you install these because it will these are so thin that if the basket's grooved they'll basically hammer these things into the groove <laughs> and then it's effectively grooved anyway so uh this bike has almost no hours so we should be good to go um yeah let's drain the oil and get in there all right guys got the clutch cover off gonna take the pressure plate out and then we'll go get our instructions and read up on exactly how we're supposed to do this i've installed lots and lots of recluses um but like i said i don't know if i've ever put one in a kx so and the radius X is not the normal one we do. We usually do, we do a lot of radius CXs and Corey XPs. Um, but this gentleman uh, doesn't ride super hard. He rides with his kids mostly. And that's why he's getting a recluse is because <laughs> he rides with his little kids and they're falling down all the time. And this is a full on motocross race bike. And so he's like, I'm tired of my hand gets tired of pulling the clutch in. So we're gonna put a recluse in it. And that way he can just put around with his kids. Makes it like a, basically like a giant 50. So um, definitely one of the uses I see uh, a good use for a recluse. So got that all out. I don't think we're gonna need to take the basket loose. I'm gonna get this. Clutch pack out. Okay, that's all of it now. Uh, on the KX, it's actually a little bit more involved on the stacking of the plates. Let me go grab them. All right, first things first, we're gonna install these little uh, sleeves for the basket. I'll bring you guys over here, show you what I'm talking about. So these are the basket. We, you know, we need to protect these grooves or these slots so they don't get grooved and these are not grooved um they kind of show a little bit you can kind of see it but you can't feel it at all so we're good to go so we're going to install those all right now we're going to put friction you put a friction disc in first and then there are two different sizes of steel plates. So we need to split these up. There's a one millimeter and a 1.2 millimeter, millimeter. And I need to get them into two separate piles. There's four of each um, because uh, the way they want you to stack them in there is different. I'll, we'll go over it here in just a second. So let me grab my calipers and figure out which ones are which. 
one. One. So, we're starting with frictions. You go friction and then you go and you go the one millimeters you until you run out of those so alternating obviously so there's a one mil another friction for one mil and I don't know guys why <laughs> this is important on which ones go where but uh, it obviously is otherwise recluse wouldn't send you instructions that say that it is so we're gonna do it right Go one more friction. Then we start alternating with the thicker ones, the 1.2s. Then we get our expanding ring. And actually guys, I need to soak this in oil for a little bit. So I'm gonna soak this in oil for a little bit, then we'll be back and we'll install this. All right, guys, we got her all soaked up. Um, definitely important thing to do with this, partially because these friction um, material on the outside need to get oil in them, and then also all the ramps and pads and things need to get all oiled up so that it slides and moves well. Now, install our throwout rod. So that all goes in like normal. Now I'm gonna take our recluse clutch springs. Install our bolts. Speed this process up and run them in till they just touch with this and then we'll torque them. All right, so those are six millimeter bolts, the 10 millimeter heads, but the bolts are six. So that means we are looking at about seven or eight foot pounds. We'll go with seven uh, since they have springs on them and these are tighter springs than normal. Uh, that will be more than enough torque. We'll do a star pattern. All right, guys, we got it in, ready to rock and roll. Uh, we're setting free play game just like normal. You want to be able to rev the bike and have the clutch lever come in between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch. So, let's see if I can. That's what we're looking for. The other thing we want to do is be able to. There we go. Not dying. Also, I like to see that right there. Chain, a little bit of tension on top. So it is pulling a little bit. Uh, that's okay as long as it doesn't die. But the idea is that it's not a clutch and won't uh, stall. But you want a little bit of drag like that so that when it does engage, it engages fully and doesn't slip. So, stoked about that. That went very well. Uh, now it's time to swap bars. That's really not worth filming. So, unless something crazy happens and I'll show you. All right, guys, that's the end of the week, the end of the schlog. It's awfully dark in here. That's because actually it's now Saturday and uh, we actually just rode with Jeb Fernandez, our winner of the contest, the 20,000 subscriber contest. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because uh, we are working on a sweet video with Jeb from, um, like I said, working on a sweet video with Jeb, the guy that won our contest, and we're having a ton of fun riding. We rode Peach Valley today, Dry Creek tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. I love you guys. Get out, spread the gospel of two wheels, and as always, I hope that what we're doing here is inspiring you guys to work on, but more importantly, get out and ride your dirt bikes!